A very good morning to all present here today. We invite all guests to get ready as the competition is about to start soon. You are required to keep your device in mute throughout the competition to ensure no disruptions. Thank you. Once again, good morning. I am Nur Farahalia Binti Razhali, your MC for today. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all gathered here today for the UTHM Materials Lecture Competition MLC 2023. Your presence and participation is highly appreciated and anticipated. On behalf of the on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to welcome all of you to the UTHM Materials Lecture Competition MLC 2023. For your information, there are a total of five contestants that are participating in this year's competition. Before we begin our agenda for today, recitation of the du'a will be led by our representative, Muhammad Al-Sheikh from Islamic University of Medina. I'd like to welcome Muhammad Al-Sheikh to the stage. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين يا كريم يا ودود إنديد we have gathered here to express our appreciation for your amazing gift. Make us servants or your servants who are always thankful, whether it's a small favor or a large favor. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, we hope your blessing for the material lecture competition MLC 2023 con concluding program. You must be aware that we wish to benefit for your Rahma, from your Rahma. Inspire us to adore everything that's good and make us, our lecturers and our leaders, continue istiqama. High division and strengthening community, society, nation, and country. Adorn us with your noble character, patience, obedience, and conformity to rules and regulations. And don't leave us forgetful and careless in carrying out our obligations. Ya Dal Jalali Wal Ikram, please grant us excellent health, mental fitness, mental calm, and spiritual strength. With it, 
We want to be able to meet problems, compete, and enhance the dignity of ourselves, our families, the community, and the country. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين Amin ya Rabbal Alamin. Thank you, Muhammad Al-Sheikh. May Allah always give us guidance and help, especially throughout our program this morning. Now, I would like to welcome the Honorable Judging Panels for today competition. The Honorable Judging Panels for today competition are Dr. Nur Azam Badrul Zaman, Professor Madia Dr. Sufiza Ahmad, T.S. Dr. Lee T. Chuan, and Professor Madia Dr. Mais Linda Izwana Binti Idris. All the panel's decisions are final and individual marks are confidential and will not be discussed. Before we begin with the video presentation, I will read the competition rules first. Competition rules are structure of the presentation and clarity of explanation and argument, standard of presentation, personal enthusiasm for the subject, ability to deliver presentation compellingly, technical content of the presentation, clarity and relevance of any visual aids used, ability to deliver a concise and meaningful summary at the end of the presentation, ability to present within the specified time allocated, ability to handle charges equation, this competition will start with participants' video presentation for 15 minutes and followed with question and A session in 10 minutes. Dear audience present here, today I would like to remind everyone to ensure that no guidance or prompts are given to the participants as, they, as, as this may disrupt the process of competition and the focus of the participants. Thank you for your cooperation. Without further ado, I would like to welcome our very first contestant for today, Ayman Haikal bin Aizam Hamidi, with his video presentation entitled PHA BCP Biocomposite Filament Extrusion for 3D Printing. What is 3D printing? So, 3D printing, also known as additive manufacturing, is a method of creating three dimensional objects layer by layer uh, using computer created design. 3D printing is an additive process whereby uh, layers of material are built up to create a 3D part. So, there are several types of 3D printing. Uh, so, firstly, is uh, fused deposition modeling known as FDM, and then select uh, stereolithography, SLA, then selective laser sintering, known as SLS, uh, selective laser melting, known as SLM, and lastly, electron beam melting, known as EBM. So in Malaysia, or even though in the world, uh, FDM was the famous method or technique uh, to be used in 3D printing. So there are some parts that have uh, in the FDM 3D printing machine, such as extruder, nozzle, printed part, hot plate, and filament. So the most important parts for FDM 3D printing was uh, the filament. So hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Ayman Haikal bin Aizam Hamidi. Today I want to present about PHA BCP Biocomposite Filament Extrusion for 3D printing. So, for the research background of this study, uh, firstly, it's a filament material. So, polylactic acid, uh, or we know as PLA, was a popular material for filament FDM 3D printing. So, for this study, uh, PHA was utilized to generate uh, filament since its property were almost identical to PLA, although PHA filament had not been yet made in previous study. So then, uh, in this study, we use PHA biocomposite, which is we mix with 
uh, by facet calcium phosphate uh, to improve the properties because uh, by facet calcium phosphate uh, it's a biocompatible that same with uh, PHA and it has a promising properties so then uh, use of PHA filaments for 3D printing so as a PHA polymer is often derived from leaf sources its manufacture is ecologically favorite because it's environmentally friendly PHA over several benefits uh, to be recycled and biodegradable although PHA was mostly used in biomedical application so for this research uh, PHA also uh, want to uh, PHA 3D printing also want to be part of the biomedical application so uh, if there is a research there is a problem statement so for our problem statement is firstly all machines such as injection molding have too many drawbacks uh, because the injection molding machine was big and too many energy consumption use and can uh, related to pollution and the machine also not portable also not portable and can only produce only one sample so then our second problem statement was people produce more non biodegradable plastics that can cause various of pollution uh, because uh, so we create this biodegradable uh, material to counter the non biodegradable product as people can use this biodegradable uh, material to create something else so then our material we use PHA as a matrix and bifacet calcium phosphate as a filler which we extract from eggshell waste powder we synthesize to uh, make a powder uh, and then we combine with polyethylene glycol as a binder to combine the PHA and BCP and we produce PHA BCP uh, we mix using Brabender machine so for our method for this study is uh, we run the tab this table using full factorial uh, using design of expert software which have 20 run uh, and four parameters to run using this extrusion machine to get the accurate parameter for PHA BCP filament so the parameter of, uh, we use is inlet temperature uh, die temperature, spindle speed and roller puller uh, this temperature uh, people will say where do we got uh, our uh, temperature uh, we got our temperature using uh, the PHA melting point so for the PHA melting point uh, around 130 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius so we put it in the inlet temperature and the temperature and then the spin the speed and roll puller parameter uh, we using uh, a typical parameter for this extrusion machine so this 20 runs we get from generating from the design of expert uh, full factorial so for the result on filament using design of expert uh, we run around 20 runs and then this we got this output uh, which have three of the parameters that get around 1.77 and 1.75 uh, 1.75 to 1.80 millimeter uh, for your information for filament for FDM we must have uh, diameter of filament around 1.75 millimeters to 1.80 millimeters to create a accurate uh, filament for FDM 3D printer so on this result we can see that filament have 1.75 to 1.80 mm that have three three uh, output 
Uh, so from this output, uh, we analyze using ANOVA. Uh, analyze using ANOVA for filament diameter. So this ANOVA, we get that half normal plot and then we take dot that have interaction uh, each parameter. So from the interaction, we got that uh, significant data of the sum of square, uh, mean of square, F value, and other else. So from that uh, value, we can get this optimization condition for filament diameter. So for this optimal optimization condition is uh, we uh, the ANOVA gives the RAM plot that we create that uh, we want that the filament must be 1.75 to 1.8 millimeter. So the ANOVA give that solution, uh, one out of 90, 93 solution that get 1.76479. So from this, we run another run uh, using ANOVA suggestion parameter uh, like this, uh, the inlet temperature around 149.666, uh, the te die temperature is 130, the spindle speed uh, around 8, and the puller, roller puller is 55, and then we get that uh, same output with the plus minus 0 0.01 millimeter. So from that, uh, we know that this uh, study was successfully because we can get the parameter around the range of 1.75 to 1.8 millimeters. So the conclusion is FDM, FDM is widely used for any other any other 3D printing object in and we can create the filament, new filament using new material also. Okay, then we create from FDM, then we can get the BCP, PHA BCP. Uh, we can get the filament using the OE for the study and then we run through the machine, the extrusion machine and we get around 1.75 to 1.80 mm, which is we get that 1.76 plus minus 0 0.01 mm, and then we get our new our new material. So that's for my study. Okay. So before I end this, uh, I have some some to say. Uh, I have some to say, which is 3D printing technology can create a better future layer by layer, and biodegradable material can keep the future society alive. Okay, so that's all from me. I'm a hacker, so thank you. What is 3D printing? So, 3D printing, also known as Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Ayman Haika. Uh, it is an amusing uh, topic, uh, which is related to uh, 3D printing for biocomposites. Okay, uh, so uh, a question from me. Uh, biomedical components, uh, we know that uh, it is going to be a very expensive uh, components. Uh, and especially uh, when you're talking about biocomposite and the additional of uh, so many parameters. And uh, speaking of the additional of 3D printing uh, in this work, so uh, it is believed that uh, the cost of overall process will be increased. So in your opinion, how uh, or what can we do uh, to reduce 
the process of the whole procedure. Uh, what can we do for reduce the cost, right? So what can we do for reduce the cost, which is we can, uh, we can, what we call, we can get the parameter accurately first. And then when we get the parameter accurate, so we don't have to make the run, 20 run, right? So uh from that we can reduce some of the costs and then for uh, i think that's all for my answer All right, Mr. Ayman Haikal, I have one question related to the uh, material that you have been used for your experimental work. Okay, based on your uh, abstract and your presentation, you are using BCP, right? Yes. All right, is it from the eggshell derived? Yes, doctor. What will be happen if we change the source from eggshell to the another type of BCP? in order to get the filament diameters. Is that any um, uh, changes or can you give any comment on it? Thank you. Uh, if we change uh, from HL waste BCP to the BCP synthetic, uh, it not change a bit uh, on the parameter because it's still a BCP. Uh, then uh, uh, if we use the synthetic BCP, it will get the more accurate than we synthesize from actual risk. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ayman Haikal bin Aizam Hamidi, for such an inspiring video presentation. Now, I would like to welcome our second contestant for today, Pravina Anaprompuan K. Paramasivam, with her video presentation entitled Evaluation of the BSCF Composite Cathodes Electrochemical Performance via Dynamic Simulation and Modeling. Good day everyone, I'm Pravina Paramasivam, Mechanical Engineering undergraduate student from University of Tuanusino, Malaysia. Today, I would like to present my research topic on evaluation of BSCF composite cathodes, electrochemical performance, via dynamic simulation and modeling. Without further ado, let's look into the introduction of my research topic. So from this slide, we can understand that the global primary energy consumption from 1985 to 2022 was drastically increased uh, to that uh, all the years. And they are um, oil, coal, gas, nuclear, hydro, and other renewable energies. And we can see that the renewable energies are the most least in these statistics. Therefore, energy consumption in this refers to the amount of energy utilized in various forms uh, that we can list it out uh, into electricity, fossil fuels, and also renewable sources. However, this excessive energy consumption, particularly from non-renewable sources, leads to increased greenhouse gas emissions, as shown in this picture, and contributes to climate change, air pollution, and resource depletion which posing significant environmental challenges. Therefore, fuel cells were considered as an alternative energy sources, particularly solid oxide fuel cell. But why is solid oxide fuel cell? This is because this solid oxide fuel cell are high efficiency and because of its long-term stability and also its fuel flexibility where we can use any fuels, especially we are considering hydrogen in our case study. And also because of low emission, which relatively um, improve the environmental impact as well. 
Next, looking into the first problem statement of my research topic would be generally a soft cell operates at higher temperature, which is about 700 and above. This situation has been leading to severe degradation performance in SFC, where slower start up and a shortest lifespan of SFC can be seen. Therefore, this will be our first problem a statement of our research, which uh, we will be opting for reducing the temperature and make it a use for a lower uh, temperature SFC application. Uh, secondly, in order to reduce the operating temperature of SFC, uh, finding suitable materials for the comp components, especially in our study, uh, the cathode has been challenging. The so previous study has been revealed that barium sodium cobalt fracture, also known as, as BSCF, uh, and perovskite, compatible for uh, lower temperature SFC due to its high oxygen permission and oxygen ion diffusion. However, still its structural instability of cubic uh, BSCF phase at lower temperatures is an issue of concern. Hence, um, in our studies, we are discussing about incorporating other materials such as STC, which is also known by samarium dobsirium, and also additives such as AG, which is also known as argentum, was studied for its improvement uh, in stability and durability of the BSC composite cathode. And, and that way, both of the STC and AG has been uh, revealed that uh, they increase ionic conductivity and also work best at low temperature. And that will be our second problem statement. And the third comes the most important part, which will be the evaluation procedure on BSCF composite cathodes electrochemical performance, uh, where the existing simulations or modeling are very complex and specified according to each of the researchers, where the conditions or situation that have been considered in each of the researcher studies are um, really, really uh, specified. So therefore, we in our studies, we also have our some vital parameters which uh, we're going to study. Hence, uh, a simulation model will develop to study the electrochemical properties of uh, especially the polarization resistance and ionic uh, conductivity of our BSF composite cathode as an early prediction. Thereby, what's the purpose of this study? Why am I conducting a research on this topic? So it will be the first will be BSF is revealed to be to generate high electrochemical performance. In our case, that will be the ionic conductivity at lower temperature SFC application. This is the most important thing that we're going to look for a SFC application, higher ionic conductivity. The second will be developed prediction from dynamic simulation will uh, to create a better parameter or result than using a microscope uh, observation result, which will be eventually saving the cost and saving the time as well. Not only, uh, which minimize the procedure of uh, the observation or the experimental. That will be the second. The third will be further decrease in temperature will lead to a longer service time, which will be um, cost us very low. And this also allows to broaden the material choices, um, especially for the components. In our case, it will be the cathode material. And the fourth, uh, not forgetting making SFC more affordable and extending to market such um, uh, alternative energy sources is very good to our um, mankind and our earth. So next, let's discuss about the material and methods that have been used in my research topic. Therefore, before that, uh, for your information, developed simulation model is only for the BSC composite cathode with the AG additive that operates at low temperature, which is about 400 to 600, and most probably focusing in my research topic. So the first step is experimental data retrieval from the previous study done by the previous researcher Yusuf, Yusuf Yumura. And the data will consist of a BSCF uh, STC composite cathode with AG composition of 1 to 5 uh, percentage and uh, data collection of morphology through FSM, physical through Archimedes principle, and chemical properties through XRD and electrochemical uh, data from ARS will be retrieved. Uh, second will be the additional data collection that I needed in my um, research uh, due to the limitation of the data sources. This is what I can, uh, could uh, do for to gather some uh, additional data, which will be the pore diameter through image J and also the pore equation. And the total city value of 1.5 used refer to the previous uh, author Joe's um, stating that fine microstructure has a total city value uh, range, range in 1 to 2.
So therefore, 1.5 has been used. And the third will be dynamic simulation and modeling, which will be focusing throughout our uh, my research study. So Adler Lane's D model was used, and the theoretical data was stimulated via Microsoft Excel and were analyzed for compatibility with the experiment data of this author, Yusuf Amira. Okay, first uh, experimental data that we are going to use from the previous quarter will be um, the phase analysis data, which we which the author gathered through XRD. So from this uh, intensity peak um, data, we can look into the pure AG intensity uh, increased throughout all the amount of AG added to the BS Vesica composite cathode. So the next will be the microstructure in identification data will be the second data they're going to use which are gathered through the FSM. And from these pictures, we can look at all the pictures that we can see the agglomerated particles. So uh, the author stated that uh, when the AG was added to each of the component in a very increasing amount, th there is an increment in the particle size and also the particle uh, so tended to agglomerate each other. And she also have been stated that the porosity of the sample reduced when the AG amount was increased. The third experimental data used will be the porosity and density data, which are conducted through the Archimedes principle. And from this data, we can uh, say that uh, BSF STC AG 0% or 0% has the highest porosity, and while the BSF STC AG 5% has the lowest porosity and the highest density as well. So from this, we can look, we can state that when the AG content was increased in the composite cathode. A similar pattern of increasing density and the decreasing porosity was seen across all the samples. And the fourth data, which will be the important one, will be the electrochemical data, which gathered through EIS uh, equipment. So these are the polarization resistance, and this is the conductivity resistance we're going to focus in our study. So when the AG amount was increased in through that all the sample at all the temperature from 400 to 600, the polarization resistance show an uh, increasing pattern. And the same goes to the uh, cathode uh, conductivity, which I am um, shows a decreased pattern in cathode conductivity. So from this, we can deduce that the lower uh, the lower the cathode conductivity, the higher the polarization resistance will be. So in order to achieve a higher conductivity in SOFC system, the polarization resistance should be low. Since our study focusing on developing a simulation model. So Adler's lean steel model was considered, and this model is used to predict the polarization resistance of the SOFC mixed ion and electron con conductors, uh, which are known as MIC cathode. In our case, would be the BSCF. So in order to use this model, there are some conditions that we have to follow. Uh, the MIC material should be used, which is the BSCF, the cathode where oxygen surface exchange and the solid state diffusion process are covered. And the key parameters that are used in this ALS model will be the porosity, tortuosity, and surface area and the thickness of the electrode. So this will be the main um, polarization resistance equation. Uh, uh, in line with the ALS model. Next, the additional data that I have mentioned previously in the previous slide, which will be the pore analysis. Uh, the analysis will be uh, conducted in two ways, MHJ and D-pore equation. So through the MHJ equation, the procedure is manually measuring all of the pore into 30 micrographs, and the average um, outcome will be tabulated into here. So we can see that that's inconsistent in the pore diameter uh, measurements when the, when the amount of Ag increase across them. And the second method will be the d pore equation. So where the diameter of the pore will be evaluated to the porosity of the samples and the diameter of grain and the specific surface of adsorption as well. So therefore, these are the tabulated results of, from, the, from using the d pore equation, where we can see the, in the, there's a consistent uh, result from it, when the amount of AG has been increased, the power diameter could be increasing as well. So looking at uh, both of the uh, um, results, we are considering the power equation result uh, because of uh, due to the inaccurate data from image because the image itself is very, very unclear and it's almost difficult to, um, to come up with the quite uh, nearly precise data of uh, power diameter. Next, all the data from experimental and additional 
will be gathered and then simulated through Microsoft Excel. In the Microsoft Excel, we have two main uh, uh, formulas, the polarization resistance and ionic conductivity, which will eventually lead to the last part of the research with the theoretical data. So for the polarization resistance, we have a formal equation that literally depends on them, which will be the effective uh, diffusion, which li uh, in line with boss circuit equation. So boss circuit equation is actually um, has a relationship with a bulk diffusion and condensation diffusion, which most probably happening in SFC applications. So the result and discussion will be uh, the temperature will be around between 400 and 600, which will be focusing on the low temperature for SFC application. The porosity will be retrieved from the experimental data, the diameter of the from, from the additional data, and the total polarization resistance from the ALS module. And the thickness of gas boundary layer is the layer where we can um, retrieve from the experimental setup of EIS. Through the ALS model, we have came up with the theoretical data for the polarization resistance and ionic conductivity. So the experimental data is here uh, and, and it's retrieved from the previous order. From the simulated data by using the LS model to the 400 and 600 degrees Celsius, we can look at the graph and this deduce that um, theoretical data increases with the AG amount for all of the, uh, for all of the temperatures in a very um, constantly manner. And the highest conductivity that we have been um, deduced for the theoretical data is at AG of 5%. And for the experimental data, the conductivity, the highest conductivity recorded at the BSC of STC AG 1%. From the previous data, we can deduce that both the theoretical and experimental data's conductivity is high at 600 degrees Celsius. However, there's still a big gap between them. And this is because of diameter of O and the total density value of 1.5. Because the power size varies and, and depending on the mean free part, which is eventually depend on the torture city values. And the torture city values in these research studies has been fixed, which is about 1.5. This is not encouraged as all of the samples have different amount of EG. Therefore, we can summarize that uh, LS-based dynamic simulation source compatibility when compared with both the experimental and theoretical data with the highest conductivity is at 600 and simulated through Microsoft Excel. And it is, has been successfully interpreted the polarization resistance and the conductivity, but it's quite difficult to find out the acceptable amount of AG among the samples. And this is because of the fixed torture city value of 1.5, and the pole diameter was literally um, conducted by using a depot equations. Hence, the suggestions are needed to improve the simulation result. As for the torture city, it has been uh, suggested that a focused ion beam uh, scanning electron microscopy topography can be used for a precise data. And for the pore diameter, it is uh, encouraged to use a method such as a GAT adsorption method. And this is for me. Thank you. Good day, everyone. I'm Pravina Paramasiva. Interesting uh, research topic related to uh, simulation and modeling. Uh, so any question from the okay it's a general question what are the drawbacks of bs cf composite cathode um, compared to conventional fuel cell in terms of commercialization potential and the second question is what is the function of microsoft excel in in your simulation okay thank you doctor for the question uh is my voice is audible i'm sorry for the inconvenience no. What are the drawbacks of the BSCF composite compared to the conventional fuel cell? Uh, okay. And the second question is, what are the functions of Microsoft Excel in your simulation? Okay, so first of all, um, the drawback of, S of SOFC is uh, literally um, it's um, higher temperature operation. That's the main thing. Because of the higher temperature operation, it has some uh, degradation uh, in its system. Uh, degradation, uh, it can be uh, through its cathode and, and all of the electrolyte components. So therefore, um, so if uh, that's the drawbacks. So if it's compared from the conventional, I think S of C is, uh, the plus point of S of C is uh, we can, um, it's um, 
because of its low emission. Uh, first, second is its uh, fuel flexibility. We can use uh, various type of gaseous. And since we are focusing on a sustainable and environmental friendly, so SFC can be uh, considered, a, uh, I mean, hydrogen can be used as a fuel, so, uh, as a gaseous fuel. So the second question, um, because of the Microsoft Excel, so the existing simulation uh, that um, uh, done by the previous researcher is very, very specified and it's complex. Uh, for example, some uh, has even used console, uh, MATLAB, and all the stuff. So uh, in my research, I've used uh, Microsoft Excel because it's quite understandable and it's quite simple so that everyone of us can uh, understand what is going on there. I mean, every one of us, we actually have um, even a small exposure to Microsoft Excel. Uh, so if we tend to use any other softwares, or any other um, computational approach kind of system, uh, the user need to be very uh, knowledgeable through about it. So they need practice, they need some trainings about it. So therefore, Microsoft Excel has been used so that every one of us can, can understand and also we can model a simplest uh, equation through it. So that will be my answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, for my question, uh, okay, uh, you said in your abstract you need the extra parameters uh, to modulate your simulation. So what the parameters that you think is uh, you need to add on in your uh, uh, equation? Um, thank you for the question, Dr. Sofisa. So for the extra parameter, um, I don't think, uh, I don't think so. I've for the extra parameter, uh, what is uh, I meant is uh, certain parameters that I mentioned in my abstract is actually um, total city and the city. Due to the um, limited sources uh, from the derived data previously, so we actually, it would be very good if we considering the data of the total city and the city because in order to use the ALS module, the model, Torture city and the porous city are the main parameter that you're going to consider. So therefore, um, in the future works, it is uh, advisable to have a uh, specific data for torture city and the porous city of the data samples. Okay, uh, one last question. Uh Based on this research, uh, you're talking about uh, going to higher temperature. Okay, uh, it is stated in your abstract, uh, operating temperatures at 700 degree and above. So, in your opinion, what is the most highest temperature that uh, BSCF uh, can uh, operate? Uh, most highest temperature would be around. Thousand, uh, ten thousand, I guess, <laughs> because it's mostly about seven hundred and above. So, um, yeah, that's it for me. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pravina. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Previna and Apropan K. Paramesivam for your wonderful pre video presentation. Before we proceed to the next participant, we would like to take a break for 20 minutes. We would like to invite all the judges for a tea break. Thank you. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, let's continue with the next participant. And with this, I would like to welcome our third contestant for today, Shaktival M. Lechumanen, with his video presentation entitled A Comparative Analysis on the Optimization of Carbon Fiber Reinforced Polymer and Glass Fiber Reinforced Polymer as Wrapping Structures on Detected Piping System Using Computational Simulation Approach. Just imagine, there is a pipe in your house and currently it faces some leakages and you are trying to solve it by just using a tape. But do you know how durable, how reliable, how long does your particular solution could solve the problem? Considering the right material with the right orientation, with the right specification could extend the lifespan of a repair but it seems to be quite confusing, right? To consider all this aspect for just a simple pipe in your house. Well, that was just an analogy. Coming back to story. Just imagine the same thing happens in oil and gas industry. Without having a right pipe maintenance, pipes may burst, leak, Gorges may happen, pinholes can happen, the defects may lead to catastrophic failures. Therefore, the right wrapping structure with the right material should be identified to solve the problem and extend a defected pipe for a longer time. Well, that could be answered by just using a simulation and well, that is my project, my research, which is entitled A Comparative Analysis on the Optimization of Carbon Fiber Reinforced Polymer and Glass, glass Fiber Reinforced Polymer as Wrapping Structures on Defected Piping System Using Computational Simulation Approach. It seems to be quite confusing to understand, right? Well, let me make it simple. We are just trying to compare the optimization of two materials which is CFRP, carbon fiber reinforced polymer, with glass fiber reinforced polymer by just using simulation. Well, why we are considering of doing this in simulation? It could save up a lot of time, it could save up a lot of cost and further details will be explained further in this presentation. The reason why we took this particular research to be focused in oil and gas industry is because pipelines are considered the lifelines. Pipelines are considered the critical structure in oil and gas industry because safety is given the highest priority since the risk exposure is high. So. To maintain this pipeline, insulations are one of the method that is considered to maintain the continuous product flow, to maintain the durability of pipe and to provide high mechanical strength and flexibility. Let me get into the real problem. The real problem is that whenever defects happens or damages happens in piping system, it will cause less efficiency in the product flow and it will affect the lifespan durability and reliability of a piping system. So the existing method to solve the problem itself has some shortcomings whereby the existing method are considered temporary and they are just being utilized for the sake of to solve the problem for a short time period and they are trial and error method only. They are being just uh, implemented with just trial and error method only. And they are being backed up with minimal statistical simulation studies. Well, to be very specific, composite wrappers, the existing composite wrappers itself, they lead to two catastrophic failures. The first one is overstress of the pipe. Second is delamination whereby the composite's bonding strength decrease 
So the idea is to identify the right lamination orientation of composite wrapping structure by just by using simulation, computational simulation approach. And to identify which is the right material in between the carbon fiber and, uh, and glass fiber to be utilized for specific piping system problem. Before getting into the solution, let me briefly explain to you what is the existing procedure to solve any pipe issues in the existing pipelines. So whenever a defect happens, temporarily the pipeline will be shut down and clamping method will be utilized to be fixed at the damaged region and that clamping method uh, and, and that metal clamping will be there for 6 to 12 months before the entire pipe segment will be replaced with a new one. So that's a very very conventional method and let me explain to you what will be our solution to, to maintain the pipe integrity. So considering all the uh, problems to maintain the pipe integrity, our solution stands out to be to have four major steps. The first one is micro inspection where 3D scanners and UTTM which is ultrasonic thickness testing will be utilized to understand, to analyze the thickness, the internal thickness of the pipe and 3D scanners will be utilized to convert the physical model into a 3D CAD model. And from the 3D CAD model, simulations will be utilized to understand the integrity of the damaged pipe. Static analysis, finite element analysis, CFD analysis will be utilized to study on the existing, uh, uh, integri uh, existing integrity of the pipe structure. From there, iterations of solution, iterations of composite wrapping structures will be suggested according to that particular case. And as we all know, whenever the defective pipe is not wrapped or it not, uh, it has not uh, uh, insulated, and this is how it will react. Whereby, the, due to the pressure loading, it will move outward and. Interestingly, whenever we apply the carbon fiber reinforced polymer, this case will be seems to be very different, whereby it will react against the pressure at the uh, defected area. And among the simulated orientations, we found that that the 45-90-0-45 degrees uh, with the eight layers of uh, layer uh, layer orientation seems to reduce or seems to possess a uh, low maximum stress on the repaired pipe compared to other uh, orientations and at the same time it successfully it has reduced 94.10 percent of stress reduction on an average which is 0.2 percent higher than glass fiber reinforced polymer and interestingly the same orientation seems to have a higher minimum factor of safety of carbon fiber reinforced polymer as well. And for comparative study approach, it found that the carbon fiber reinforced polymer possess a better properties compared to glass fiber reinforced polymer. And after the pipe structure has been wrapped, the CFD analysis has, has been done to make sure that the product flow is not being affected after or before the pipe uh, wrapping material has been applied in SOLIDWORKS whenever there is no any openings uh, at the uh, system at the watertight system then it seems to be that the wrapping structure is successful and it is effective to react against any leakage and this is the uh, novelty and inventiveness of this research where entirely this simulation and this uh, approach has been done using SOLIDWORKS only, whereby it could uh, identify that the exact CFRP wrapping thickness 
and the optimized lamination orientation could be identified and before and after wrapped pipe failures can be simulated and CFD analysis done to make sure that the wrapper is effective in maintaining the fluid flow. And for the stress reduction part, about 94.10% of the stress reduced by CFRP which is 0.2% higher than glass fiber reinforced polymer. And interestingly, this carbon fiber reinforced polymer covers or withstand or resistant against all the pressure parameters that has been explained to you earlier. And the benefits of this uh, to the society by this research is that it gives a great impact on the economy where cost, time and effort, effort could be saved during the real application as exact orientation is identified from the environment part we could see that excessive lack or wrapping material could be avoided as exact orientation is identified and the CFRP is recyclable too. And from the social part, we could see that since this uh, pipe structure is always exposed to risk and therefore factor of safety of CFRP and glass fiber reinforced polymer could be identified from simulation itself. And therefore, whenever we are applying on a pipe structure, we could see the way how does the uh, wrapper could uh, could react against any pressure loading. Strength and safety features of the pipeline is preserved. And this research could give a great impact on oil and gas sectors, pipe development in the manufacturing industries, safety pra uh, practitioners, materials such as composite related industries. And the nearest product competitor, it can be seen that in a, in a conventional repairing method, compound box clamps and steel sleeve and slip lining are considered our competitor whereby they are using different kind of materials such as steel or uh, all this kind of uh, material. And uh, we have to establish that this research and this uh, carbon fiber reinforced polymer tend to possess a better properties compared to this uh, this uh, conventional repairing method. The industry partner that we could potentially approach is that the Petronas Shell Clock uh, Spring NRI and Exxon Mobil. But currently, uh, we had collaborated with Carbomans Carbon Fiber uh, as our uh, industry partner to give or uh, to give us the data sheet, the uh, proper data for us to simulate all the uh, carbon fiber reinforced polymer orientations and this research has been already uh, written in a form of uh, journal where we have submitted to journal of failure analysis and prevention and we have submitted to international journal of integrated engineering and we have uh, submitted an abstract uh, submission to second virtual conference on computational and experimental mechanics 2021 so Thank you so much for hearing from us. Thank you, Shaktivo, for the interesting research topic. So uh, my question will be, um, we believe that the uh, computational simulation approach has shown uh, quite an uh, outstanding output for uh, CFRP and also GFRP. So in your opinion, uh, how will this uh, approach will also uh, increase the number of uh, composite uh, or type of composite that can also be occupied in such field? Okay. Uh... Uh, am I audible, doctor? Yes. Okay. So a very good morning to panel of judges. So uh, to be uh, to be realistic, the approach over here is to get as as more as uh, composites into this field be because to consider all this material, we need a lot of lab test. So we are looking forward to put uh, 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 an approach saying that these simulations can be utilized to identify the best composites that is needed for such cases. So not all cases need carbon fiber, not all cases need glass fiber, not all cases need Kevlar or so on. So what we are putting into the concern is that to get into, uh, to get all the composites 
uh, that can uh, that can give us the best material to be utilized for specific cases, and this could be identified just from the simulation. That's a question. Um, just now you have mentioned uh, CFRP is better than GFRP. Can you explain in more um, materials um, context why this happened? Maybe you can answer it in mechanical properties or anything related to materials. Okay. Uh, about carbon fiber reinforced polymer, uh, to be very frank, the theoretical maximum pressure, which is about 19.6 megapascal that is to consider the maximum pressure that we got it from the case study when we compare with uh with glass fiber the glass fiber has uh, has uh the substrates seems to have failures when it performs during 19.6 megapascal pressure regardless this particular uh carbon fiber we get to see that it performed well, 0.1. 0.2, when, when, whenever we get the number of layers, it seems like uh, glass fiber, the best uh, wrapping uh, material was, uh, I mean, the best uh, layer was unidirectional. Eight layers with unidirection. But uh, the carbon fiber reinforced polymer, we get to see that it can perform in eight layers with four different uh, arrangement of layers. So the substrate did not break at 19.86 megapascal for carbon fiber compared to glass fiber. For material side, uh, uh, we, could, we, uh, we could see that the lifespan, theoretically the lifespan of carbon fiber to be extended for a longer time compared to glass fiber. So uh, according to the uh, industrial insights, they found that carbon fiber is a good material to be utilized as a wrapping structure, but cost is a big major issue to be implemented. Therefore, they approached us to come up with a simulation approach to say that they could consider of using this uh, carbon fiber in post polymer as a wrapping structure whenever the case needed. So they don't need to have a trial and error method instead to have the uh, parameters right from the uh, simulation uh, uh, itself. Okay, okay, uh, Mr. Shaktivel. All right, um, you uh, claim that the carbon fiber have a very good performance as, as compared to the glass fiber reinforced polymer. Is that possible to um, mix these two in the future? Is a layer by layer because you said if you we use the, the carbon fiber in total, it will increase the cost, right? So is that possible? What do you think? Yeah, there is a huge possibility because over here uh, we 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 have showcased the approach. Why don't we have the in between? We have glass fiber composed with uh, carbon fiber. Actually, that will be another uh, op, uh, great op, uh, venture uh, into the research. There is a high possibility, no problem. Okay, so for my question is, uh, you said before you try to use uh, the difference parameter for CAD simulation. So I just want to know what the parameters others than you said before the mechanical part. Is it any parameters that you think is very important for the company to consider when they want to use uh, this uh, composite material? Yes, yes absolutely. Uh, uh, I, I, I would like to answer it with our extended research parameters that we are currently uh, doing, uh, where uh, the humidity pressure, external pressure, ex uh, external temperature, uh, another factor uh, that are being considered by particularly Petronas to implement in their, in their pipelines because uh, what we have in the solid work is actually based on internal uh, pressure. But uh, for the sake of uh, uh, compromising or to be utilized for external usage, 
uh, we need to consider the uh, humidity, the corrosion tolerance, uh, and, and uh, corrosion tolerance, pressure, and temperature that is existing at the pipe. Because uh, the temperature, uh, even the humidity, is not the same at, re, uh, res, uh, at uh, downstream compared to the upstream. So that's why currently we have tried to build some, uh, not to say some, actually we already have the uh, programming uh, where we have, uh, we are utilizing MATLAB and Python to study the lifespan durability, reliability of a repaired pipe structure. Uh, we predict it with our uh, predictive statistical mathematical model. So humid, uh, all these parameters are taken into concern. Okay, Mr. Sakshiva, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shaktiva, for such an informative video presentation. Now we will give five minutes for all the judges to calculate the marks.
Next, I would like to welcome our fourth contestant for today, Natasha Salsabila, with her video presentation entitled Fabricated of Gold Nano by Pyramids as LSPRP's Sensing Material for Glucose Detection. of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. Hi, I'm Natasha Salsawila, Master Student by Research in the Faculty of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. Today, I came up with an interesting discussion. Fabrication of gold nanobay pyramids as LSPR-based sensing material for glucose detection. Okay, metal nanoparticle as a part of nanotechnology implementation has unique optical properties if they are irradiated with light in a specific wavelength called localized surface plasmon resonance or LSPR. Many nanoparticles have this phenomenon, but in this study, the good nanoparticles is used due to their advantage, such as being inert, biocompatible, and not easy to oxidize. Generally, good nanoparticles has two shapes, isotropic and anisotropic. In isotropic shape, the direction does not influence the occurring LSPR phenomenon, such as spherical shape. But in anisotropic, the direction controls the LSPR properly. An example of anisotropic is elongated shape as the slide show. Then, the way pyramid shape is chosen because it has higher sensitivity and selectivity to surrounding medium change that is suitable for sensing application. It has a more pointed shape with more electron on its surface. An increase in the number of surface electrons will lead to an increase in the electron enrichment field. This picture offering got nano by pyramids or GNBPS has larger refractive index sensitivity and figure of merit value. Then, this talk focuses on comparing between pure GNBPS, I mean functional GNBPS or A GNBPS, and thiol functional GNBPS or T GNBPS as sensing materials to detect glucose. I'm sure that you are familiar with diabetes. Can of disease when the body cannot produce the insulin hormone properly, so the body is unable to process carbohydrates into an energy source, which is characterized by fluctuation in blood glucose from its normal range. Diabetes can increase the prevalence of high complication for patient compared to other diseases and is predicted to be the seventh most significant cause of death in 2030. This disease has suffered by over 500 million people in the worldwide, with forecasts reaching 700 million in 2045. For Malaysia, it is predicted that 6,000 people will be in 2045. Existing glucose detection methods are glucose meter and urine testing, with several areas for improvement, such as for glucose meter, it is invasive, uh, can cause damage to human tissue, and for urine testing, it is need long-time detection and performed by experts. So, an alternative method for glucose detection is important to be developed. We can utilize the LSPR phenomenon possessed by GNPPS to detect glucose. This method is a fast response time, real-time detection, label-free, and high sensitivity to surrounding medium change. As sensing material, GNPPS are chosen due to their high sensitivity and selectivity. Then, the seed-mediated growth method is used for the synthesis. We functionalize GNPPS with amine and thiol because glucose is one of the carbohydrate molecule. It is important to use ligands so GNPPS surface can bind with glucose properly through chemical bonds. Okay, what are the unique properties of GNPPS? Let's talk about it. As I mentioned before, the direction can influence the properties of nanoparticles, including the LSPR phenomenon in anisotropic shape, like by pyramid. Here is the comparison of the LSPR spectrum between spherical, nanorod, and nanobay pyramids. The important thing is the peak that they have. For spherical, it just has one peak, but nanorods have two pair of peaks, T peak and L peak, which are transversal and longitudinal depending on the electron oscillation. Like nanorod, GNBPS also have two peaks, but in narrower ones. The tip of GNBPS on the four sides can increase the electron surface. The increasing electron surface can lead the higher electric field arrangement. 
Therefore, GNBPS have higher relative insensitivity and value of merit than other structure. Okay, we already know about GNBPS and their unique properties. Then, how can we produce them? We can produce GNBPS using the seed mediated growth method or SMGM because it offers a high degree of control over the nanoparticle size, shape, and of course, optical properties. Additionally, the SMGM can produce GNBPS with high yield and reproducibility, making them reliable for large-scale production. The method also allows for fine-tuning the LSPF properties, such as their absorption and scattering spectra by controlling the aspect ratio and other structural parameters. Uh, then SMGM is divided into two steps, namely the seeding and growth process. In the seeding, we produce a gold nanoparticles as a seed. Then the seed will grow into GNBPS in the growth step. Uh, we already know how to synthesize GNBPS. Then, GNBPS can be functionalized to involve the modification of their surface chemistry with various molecules or biomolecules, which allows them to bind or interact with specific targets in solution selectively, so it can increase the system selectivity. The choice of functionalization agent for GNBPS depends on the specific application and target molecule of interest. Because we want to detect glucose, amine and thiol groups are chosen depending on their affinity to produce binding between GNBPS surface and glucose. I made a time variation for the functionalization process to obtain the optimum time that functionalization groups can layering in the GNBPS surface. Not that GNBPS are covered by CTI plus layer from CTEF or cetyl methyl ammonium bromide before functionalization as a reducing agent in the seeding and growth process in the synthesis before. But after functionalization, the CTI plus layer will be replaced by amine or thiol groups. Here is the illustration for the role of amine and thiol on the GNBPS surface. The binding between amine and glucose is called amine bonds and for thiol called covalent bonds. This is the result solution after we synthesize and functionalize GNBPS. For the synthesis, there is a mechanism of growth from seed and increasing time leads to the decrease of gold source, which affect the production of truncated and GNBPS cannot grow in perfect shape. Figure 1 show a GNBPS or amine functionalized GNBPS final solution for 0.5 hours until 72 hours. It can be seen that over 12 hours, the solution turn into light yellow. And figure 2 show the TGNBPS or thiol functionalized GNBPS final solution for 0.5 hours until 72 hours. For over 12 hours, the solution turns into darker. This is the characterization of pure GNBPS using UVPs, XRB, and VSAM. This is the UVPs characterization for a GNBPS or amine functionalized GNBPS. Over 12 hours, there is no peak anymore in the spectrum absorbance in line with the color solution in the previous slide. Then, from the normalization curve, both TSPR and LSPR, the UVP spectrum shift in the red region, indicating an increasing of aspect ratio. The aspect ratio itself is ratio between the length and the width of GNBPS. Then, the highest absorbance value for functionalization is obtained in 3 hours. And for the following characterization, the range use is 0.5 until 12 hours because over 12 hours, there is just agglomeration and no nanoparticle anymore. Then this is the XRD result for a GNBPS. A side peak contains amine molecules such as SI, N, HO, and H. The highest side peak is obtained in 3 hours, indicating that the highest binding reaction between GNBPS surface and amine occurs at 3 hours. For VSAM, it can be seen that 3 hours has the highest surface density compared to other functionalization time. And after 3 hours, the shape of GNBPS slowly turns into road and almost spherical. This is because amine can scrape the surface and leads an optical properties change. From three characterization, which are UVPs, XRD, and VSAM, it can be obtained that three hours is the best time for a functionalization using amine. Next, there is the UVPs result for TGNBPS or thiol functionalized GNBPS. It can be seen that over 12 hours, a spectrum turns larger, indicates that the nanoparticle shape is not perfect by premise. This is the answer to why the color solution of thiol turns into darker over 12 hours in the previous slide. Therefore, the 0.5 until 12 hours range is used for the following characterization. And from the normalization curve, both TSPR and LSPR, the spectrum shifted into the blue region. In XRD characterization, there is no side peak as AGNBPS uh, before. 
but functionalization slowly increases the 111 and 200 plans. No side peak in the XRD pattern indicates the purity of TGN BPS. For VSAM, 3 hours produce the highest surface density compared to other functionalization time. Surface density and absorbance value are important thing and represent the ability of material to interact with targeted analyte. So, the optimum time for functionalization using Tayo is also 3 hours. This is the zeta potential measurement. The increasing zeta value indicates the ability to prevent agglomeration in transversa to Tayo. This value also influences the absorbance value for LSPR response, affecting the capability to detect glucose. The setup for the LSPR based sensor consists of the light source, simplex fiber optics, soft match chamber, spectrometer, and a computer equipped with a software analyzer. And here is the working principle. So when GNBPS detects glucose as a targeted analyte, it can cause a spectrum shift toward the LSPR spectrum. Therefore, the setting parameter used is intensity change and wavelength shift. After setup, we test the plasmonic response to confirm the spectrum successfully obtained using pure GNBPS, A GNBPS, and T GNBPS. Then we do sensor performance testing like sensitivity, selectivity, stability, and repeatability. After setup, the LSPR response testing confirmed that GNBPS, uh, A GNBPS, and T GNBPS can detect glucose marked by different absorbance value and peak position. For A GNBPS, it produces a higher absorbance peak compared to T GNBPS. Here is the comparison between pure GNBPS, A GNBPS, and T GNBPS. It can be seen that the functionalization process can lead to a decrease in absorbance value because functionalization groups can cover the GNBPS surface, reducing the overall exposed surface area. Then, A GNBPS have a higher absorbance value than T GNBPS because uh, amine groups on the surface of the GNBPS have a positive charge, while thiol groups have a neutral charge. The positive charge of the amine groups leads to enhanced electrostatic interaction with the negatively charged metal surface, resulting in a stronger binding affinity and better coverage on the GMPS surface. This result is in accordance with zeta potential measurement that amine has positive and thiol negative values or charge. The next test is sensitivity to observe the ability of the sensor to detect glucose in different concentration. The concentration used is 1 micromolar until 1 molar. A GNBPS has the best linear regression compared to T GNBPS and pure GNBPS, marked by an R square value of 1. This indicates that the sensor's output is linearly related to the input and proof that the sensor is sensitive to surrounding medium change. For the T GNBPS, the linear response is obtained in the three different range. First, 1 until 10 micromolar, the second, uh, 10 micromolar until 1000 micromolar, and the last one, 1000 micromolar until 1 molar, with different R square value. This indicates that the T GNBPS produces a lower sensitivity response in a certain glucose concentration range, uh, namely from 10,000 micromolar to 1 molar. For the overall system, the limit of detection is 1 micromolar. Then the stability test occurs to obtain the sensor ability when used at a specific time non-stop. In this study, I test the sensor for 10 minutes non-stop because one spectrum can be created in one second. If we test in 10 minutes or 600 seconds, 600 data is enough to test the system stability. The functionalization using amine and thiol can improve the stability, proved by lower error value. If we compare, T GNBPS have a lower error value than A GNBPS. Then, the purpose of the repeatability test is to ensure the reliability of the sensor, which means repeatability determines whether the sensor can produce consistent and reliable result over multiple measurement. The SPR based sensor has been developed have the great repeatability marked by low variance value. A GNBPS have a lower variance value than T GNBPS or pure GNBPS, indicating that the functionalization process also affects the sensor increasing reliability. The important test is selectivity. This test confirms the capability of an LSPR based sensor and the functionalization process to improve the binding or interaction between sensing material and uh, glucose as a targeted analyte. In this study, I test glucose with similar chemical structure analytes, namely lactose, vitamin C, and nitrium. Pure GNBPS can bind with glucose, but functionalization using amine and thiol can increase the selectivity. Also, from the charge, 
agen BPS produce the highest selectivity than pure gen BPS and T gen BPS. Even though amine groups can scrap the gen BPS tip and slowly lead to a morphological change, amine groups can increase the selectivity of gen BPS as a sensing material for glucose detection. Then I will summarize the whole of discussion. Overall, GLBPS have been successfully fabricated for the LSPR-based sensor implementation. Then, the LSPR-based sensor has reliable performance toward good sensitivity, good selectivity, high, sele high stability with a low error value, and almost consistent repeatability with a low percent variance. For the comparison, the amine groups are preferred to be used as functionalization groups to detect glucose because they perform higher selectivity than Kyle groups. That's all from me and I'll be glad to see you in the next time. Thank you, Miss Natasha Salzabila. So we are talking about gold. Yeah. Okay, uh, very interesting uh, research topic. Uh, and I believe that uh, this is more on the biomedical uh, application. And uh, speaking of uh, biomedical application so uh, mankind have been using gold for uh, quite some time uh, and speaking of uh, the application of gold uh, in i mean as 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 uh, uh, medical uh, usage uh, so speaking of the uh, material structure of gold what is i mean why gold is so special in terms of material structure uh, so that uh, it is has been used uh, for medical purposes for hundreds of years now. Okay, thank you for the question. And okay, about the special of gold nanobipermits that we seen as the slide, gold nanobipermits have four tip shape. Tip shape on the surface, it can lead a increase of electron surface compared to other structure like spherical or nanorod. An increase in the electron surface can lead the electron enhancement field. This electron enhancement field can increase the refractive index sensitivity and figure of merit. These two type of parameter is used to determine the, the capability of sensing material to detect targeted under light and the capability to sensitive to surrounding medium change. So gold nanobay permit is basically from the tip they they have in the surface. Okay, uh, Miss Natasha Salsabila, uh, thank you for your presentation. My question related to the purity of the goal. Is that uh, give any effect? Can you give any comment? Okay, about the purity of gold nano permit. In theoretical, the increase of the purity will lead the increasing of uh, the system stability, sensitivity, selectivity, and, and so on. But uh, in this study, I did not uh, do the purity uh, because in this recent step, I just synthesis and then functionalize. Maybe in the next step of the research, I will be do the purity step. To confirm that the synthesis uh, that we use in this study can produce the NPS in almost uh, ninety percent. So in this study, I just synthesis and functionalize, and the next step I will do the purity, which can lead the increasing of the sensor uh, performance. Maybe last question. Uh, may I know in your future research? how you are going to improve the sensitivity of the detection limit. Now it's less than one micrometer, right? So how are you going to improve it? Okay. Uh, in my project, the limit of detection is one micromolar, but we can increase the LOD, the limit of detection, uh, with the purity, uh, as I mentioned before. So uh, we, when the solution contain of UNBPS is pure, uh, it can increase the sensor performance through the sensitivity, selectivity, stability, and almost repeatability. Uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, the purity, it can increase the system to detect. So we, we have the pure, it can uh, increase. So, yeah, it has possible to increase the purity and increase the LODF system. 
yeah, that is the second last question. So the last question will be, why not platinum? Okay, why not platinum? Uh, first of all, uh, gold is widely used for several research in the glucose. So before before this, uh, previous study has do the glucose detection method, and they are mostly use gold in uh, various structure. But in general, they use in a basic shape like spherical. So in this study, I I try to improve the structure of gold nanobipermits. It's not in basic shape. In platinum or silver, uh, first of all, uh, it can easy to oxidize in the surrounding. Okay, uh, it the first the the first reason why we choose gold, and then uh, platinum. If we compare in silver or gold, uh, it just high price. So gold is more affordable to implement it as a sensing material. Okay, thank you, Miss Natasha Sasabila. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Natasha Salsabila, for such an informative video presentation. Now we will give five minutes for all the judges to calculate their marks.
Last but not least, I would like to welcome our last contestant for today, Muhammad Zul Izaham bin Abdul Ghani with his video presentation entitled The Influence of Copper, Argentum and Zinc Additive Material Regarding on Barium Strontium Cobalt Ferrite Based on Solid Oxide Fuel Cell Application. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is uh, Muhammad Zul Islam bin Abdul Ghani. My metric number is uh, HD21019. I am uh, from the UTHM, from uh, Faculty of uh, Mechanical Engineering. From uh, today, I want to pre present uh, regarding the influence of uh, copper oxide, argentum, and zinc for additive material on the properties of a barium strontium cobalt ferrite cathode for the um, solid oxide fuel cell application is a short review first of all uh, this is a quote of the day if you want to live a happy life that it through a goal not through a people or things from the Albert Einstein so I will uh, be uh, indicated by the quote of by Albert Einstein to ensure our life to be happy. So, for the introduction, this is the primary energy consumption by source, which is uh, mainly uh, of the energy will uh, come out from the oil, which is uh, 34%, and for the second is the coal, uh, is 37%, uh, and then uh, natural gas, uh, 24%. Hydro hydroelectric which is at 6%, nickel 5% and renewable energy 4%. This is uh, very very uh, endangered to our earth which is uh, which you can see in uh, uh, early video which is uh, that earth is uh, thick with uh, many many uh, pollution uh, that can uh, make the earth cool. And then 
for one year we have uh, produced uh, 160,000 of a uh, terawatt uh, per year it's a very very high uh, demand of uh, electric that uh, the world needs and this is uh, I focus the thing that I focus which is a uh, solid oxide fuel cell uh, which is a uh, SOFC what is this, uh, SOFC? SOFC is a uh, electro chemical device that uh, converts the chemical into the electrical energy this is a uh, is, uh, renewable energy that uh, the world needs for the application which is uh, the fueling will flow in into the device and then the electron will flow from the anode to the cathode and then uh, the electron will will collect as a uh, electricity at the load and then the ion will flow uh, between the anode and cathode which is uh, at the uh, electrolyte and then uh, the H2O will uh, deflect uh, through the exhaust and then uh, oxygen will in to uh, be cooling down the system uh, so solid asset will be cool uh, will be uh, flow with a uh, smooth This is for the system of a uh, solid asset fuel cell, and then I move on to the phase uh, stability of a uh, BSF component. It's first uh, the influence of the uh, AG argentum or silver addition. As you can see uh, in in the figures, it is uh, the AG was added around one percent until five percent. And then uh, that is uh, without the AG addition, and uh, the fundamental material intensity pattern uh, was uh, produced and have of the space structure. As you can see the in the diagram, the secondary peak will arise when they move uh, closer to the BSF uh, and STC peak. This is a result of a uh, calcination uh, reaction between uh, alkaline oxide and uh, carbon dioxide. And the influence of a uh, per oxide addition, as you can see uh, in the diagram, there is a different temperature, which is a 900, 950, and 1000 degrees. The impurity phase uh, trade by reaction of a BSF and SPC uh, corresponded to the weak P uh, show a dot at a figure 2. Uh, the, uh, this can be uh, illustrated that with uh, addition, um, it uh, did not uh, result in any formation of a new impurity phase, which is um, the result of uh, give a positive feedback which is a uh, chemical stability of the material was uh, improved by the addition of a uh, copper additive and then for the influence of a uh, zinc addition the elements in the figures as you can see it is a uh, BSF with a uh, zinc addition and the BSF in a uh, carbon dioxide and C with a uh, more zinc modified and last uh, D for uh, zinc uh, modified in uh, CO2 as you can see the element involved are uh, existed uh, in the SRD and uh, in the diagram we uh, did not show uh, secondary peaks uh, observed 
because the latest uh, expansion causes by latest parameter uh, is uh, to increase and peak location is uh, shift slightly to the left as you can see uh, at the left the peak of uh, highest at the first one and then this imply that uh, zinc uh, centering percent uh, and half the chemical stability of uh, SF with uh, zinc addition and then we move on to the uh, microstructure of uh, BSKF. The influence of uh, AG addition. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is a uh, five uh, different uh, percent, which is uh, one until five percent. As you can see, the crystallinity percentage of uh, BSKF, which is a uh, forty point sixty five percent and STC which is uh, 59.93% that uh, have been changed uh, according to the growth of impurity um, which is uh, triggered by the addition of an uh, AG, AG which is uh, agentum or silver uh, as you can see and a particle of the circle which is uh, the particle of uh, agglomerate as you can see uh, regarding to the all the temperature in uh, copper oxide addition uh, it's a uh, exhibit a uh, porous structure which is uh, essential for oxygen transport and ensuring oxygen reduction uh, reaction which is a uh, four is a very very uh, good uh, positive uh, feedback to the review and then we move on to the influence of uh, zinc addition as you can see uh, on the upper is a uh, BSCF uh, with of the addition and then uh, yes, uh, with, uh, second with uh, BSF with zinc addition and last one with, uh, with an nitrate oxide it's uh, very obvious that uh, the addition of uh, zinc uh, can uh, ensure positive outcome which is uh, you can see in uh, layer 4 as uh, have a uh, Entering uh, density around 98% uh, and 93%. Yeah. And then uh, I move on to the electrochemical properties for the influence of Ag addition. Because uh, Ag deplete the oxygen uh, silver oxide, which is at a TPP triple point one three, which is uh, show as uh, essential for ORR, uh, oxygen reduction reaction, uh, is uh, AG with addition of uh, BSF with AG, addition of AG can slightly improve the ORR activity uh, when compared uh, without our uh, pristine uh, BSF. And then the influence of uh, copper addition, the SOMC based on uh, BSF and DC. Uh, you can see uh, the highest is uh, at 950 degree, which is uh, the uh, the evidence at 950, and it shows the lowest RP value, which is a 0 0.041 uh, centimeter squared among the three degree uh, three different temperature. And then last one is for the influence of zinc addition. The performance of cell was affected by zinc sintering assistant in two different ways. One was a uh, improvement of a uh, sintering uh, issue, uh, very good feedback with uh, zinc addition. For the conclusion, uh, agentum, uh, copper, and zinc are suitable material for intermediate temperature. Improvement of a uh, method uh, can be have overcome the high temperature limitation and advanced commercialization of uh, solid oxide. The contribution of a transformation can be uh, further research. That's all from me. Thank you. Okay, terima kasih Muhammad Zul Izham. Okay, so for my first question is, 
Uh, you said in your presentation about the uh, uh, Kupum Ajinta Amzing. So, for my question is what the base or what the main factor that you choose three types of additive to add on in barium sterium cobalt ferrite? Uh, okay, for the first, uh, why I choose the material of uh, argentum, copper outside and zinc outside, because it has a it it has uh their own capability and benefit, which is uh for the copper outside uh, will increase the chemical bonding. Uh, and also enhance the cathode uh, electrochemical reaction. And then for the AG, will offer uh, better oxygen uh, surface uh, absorption and uh, this uh, association of a molecule, oxygen between uh, atomic oxygen. And then for the last one, for the zinc, uh, it has uh, provide the excellent thermal stability and good uh, oxidation resistance and also can be improve the electrochemical performance of the uh, BSCF itself. Okay, thank you. Mr. Muhammad Zuidham, you use, um, you try to apply influence of copper Argentum and zinc. Yes. Um, how about if we replace with gold, aurum? Is that any um, result? Because uh, as I can see, copper and argentum and aurum in the same group in the predictable. So, my as well can be candidate. Can you give any comment on it? Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the question, Dr. Uh, for the gold, uh, which is our uh, from the previous uh, research uh, that um, has stated that um, they uh, rarely not use our room uh, in this uh, field, which is a uh, solid acid fuel cell regarding on uh, BSCF because uh, it has a high conductivity uh, because gold is a uh, if you can see in a uh, uh, same gold has a uh, high conductivity that can uh, exhibit the porous structure of the material uh, so um, from my I have read about a uh, previous uh, research. Uh, did not recommend it on gold material. That's all for me. Okay, uh, Muhammad Zulizab. Um, I believe that the the basis of uh, your work is green technology. Okay. Yes, uh, right. and people are talking about green technology uh, nowadays. Uh, however, uh, if you look upon uh, ways of 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 uh, handling or carrying out the the work uh, in order to produce a product, uh, which is claimed as green technology, uh, we can still see uh, a lot of uh, issues coming in. For example, the use of uh, toxic materials, heavy metals, and so on. So back to your work. So how green is your green technology? Okay. Uh, for the solid, solid outside fuel cell, uh, it's uh, use the gas of hydrogen to uh, operate the system. Uh, if we compare with a combustion uh, heat engine, uh, it... Uh, Convert, uh, it will uh, give more extreme harmful to the environment, such as uh, climate change, uh, ozone layer, 
and as acid rain. So which uh, fuel cell is can offer an energy conversion process that is uh, both uh, efficient and environmentally uh, friendly because uh, the fuel cell is a hydrogen based fluid and atmosphere air is used as the fuel and oxidant for the system. So the fuel will mix with uh, the oxidant and then will uh, generate electricity and the output of the system is uh, H2O, which is uh, water and the uh, oxidant uh, flow at the at exit or exhaust. That's all from me. Thank you. Any question more from the judges? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Muhammad Zul is up. Okay. Thank you, all the judges. May you uh, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Muhammad Zul Izaham Abdul Ghani for a wonderful video presentation. Now we will give five minutes for all the judges to jot down the marks.
The results are already in my hands, and now I would like to announce the winners of this year UTHM Materials Lecture Competition MLC 2023. Before we announce the winner, I would like to invite our Dean Associated Professor, Dr. Ami bin Khalid, accompanied by Deputy Dean Professor Hassan Zuhudi bin Abdullah, to the stage for the prize giving ceremony. Before that, we would like to deliver a certificate to our beloved panel. For the first one, Dr. Nur Azam Badr Zaman. Professor Madia, Dr. Sufiza Ahmad. P.S. Dr. Lee T. Chuan. Professor Madia, Dr. Mais Linda Izwana, Binti Idris. <laughs> Thank you to all the panels. Now, the moment we have all been waiting for. Fifth place for UTHM Material Lecture Competition MLC 2003 goes to Muhammad Zul Izzaham bin Abdul Ghani with the title of The Influence of Copper Argentum Zinc Additive Material Regarding on Barium Strontium Cobalt Ferrite Based on Solid Oxide Fuel Cell Application. <laughs> Next, please give a round of applause to the fourth place participant, Ayman Haikal bin Aizam Hamidi, with the title of PHA BCP Biocomposite Filament Extrusion for 3D Printing. Now, we will announce second runner-up for UTHM Material Lecture Competition, MLC 2003, goes to Pravina Anapurumpuan K. Paramasiva with the title of Evaluation of the BRCF Composite Cated Electrochemical Performance via Dynamic Simulation and Modeling. Uh, representative, we invite the representative for the uh, Pravina. Mm -hmm. Next, 
please give a round of applause to the first runner-up for UTHM Materials Lecture Competition MLC 2003 to Natasha Salsabila with the title Fabrication of Gold Nanobiopyramids of LSPR Based Sensing Material for Glucose Detection. We invite the, the representative for Natasha Salsabila. Ladies and gentlemen, and the winner for the UTHM Materials Lecture Competition, MLC 2023, goes to, to the charming Shakti Well M. Lechmanen with the title Comparative Analysis on the Optimization of Carbon Fiber and Phospolymer and Glass Fiber and Phospolymer as Wrapping Structure on Detected Piping System. We invite the representative of the Shakti Well. Congratulations once again to everyone. Next, we will proceed to the photography station with our dean. Uh, please remain for a while on the stage, and I would like to invite all the judges to the stage for the photography station with the dean and the deputy dean. we invited Ayman Haikal. Ayman and Zul Izaham. Okay. All right, please uh, remain uh, at the stage for a while. Uh, I, I have to screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, please, uh, please, uh, remain at the stage for a while. I would like to invite all the MSC secretary two thousand twenty three to the stage for the photographization. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Ya, dia Halo, Oke, Thank you, Awudin and all the judges. <laughs> Sudah Thank you Awitin and all the judges. Yes, I will like this is all for today in behalf of the organizing community. I would like to apologize for any mistakes made throughout the competition. We hope the program can provide a positive impact on everyone involved. We would like to invite our Dean Associated Professor Dr. Amir bin Khalid, accompanied by Deputy Dean Professor Hassan Zuhdi bin Abdullah for a lunch that we have provided as our token of appreciation for the time that has shared with us today. With this, I end my duty as your MC for today till we meet again next year. Thank you and Assalamualaikum. Bye.